Hi everybody, this is Neil. So I'll just be explaining about what is networking today. Here we live in a time where we need networking. Without networking today or nowadays nothing exists. So what do you mean by networking? In simple terms you can say that networking is an interconnection between multiple devices you call it to be. So when you have say you have your PC, you have your computers, you have your printers. So when you have so many things surrounded by you, how will they intercommunicate with each other or how the communication between a PC and a printer happens is based on networking. So in today's networking world, we really need networking for the world to exist. So here I'll be just explaining how things happens with networking happens with routers and switches in the today's world. So I'll just be showing you the slide over here. What is a network? Here we can see the home network, we can see a, uh, we can see a headquarters, we can see a home person uh, accessing the network. So how today's network access happens is through only through the internet connection. I say for example if I am sitting at my home, I just want to access yahoo.com or gmail.com. So every interconnection happens through the internet or through a service provider. So actually what equipments or what are the devices present inside the service provider environment or what are the devices which are interconnected for you to connect to this on the next slide you can see that you have a router you have two switches and you have two PCs connected so now from the PC how the data communicates with the next PC here it happens through a device called a switch now on the PC, you can see a device called as NIC. That's a small card on your every PC. You call that to be network interface card. So that is nothing but an identity towards a PC or an end device. So this NIC card normally has a 48-bit MAC address you call it to be. So the very first for 24 bits you call it to be a OUI. You call them to be organizationally unique identifier then the next 24 bits you can say to be vendor specific say for example if I am a company who is owning or I am a company who is manufacturing the hardware I would just get the first 24 bits from IEEE who is a L2 standard who maintains the L2 standard then I would be allocating the next 24 bits towards my PC so every PC or every hardware device inside a LAN network has something called as MAC address you call it to be media access control address or those have several names called as physical address or you can call it to be inbuilt address or a MAC address these are the three names which you give them to be identified so MAC address is nothing but a 48 bit MAC address so every device in the LAN network is identified based on that now say I have two PCs PC1 and PC2 so both of them has P two MAC address so these two MAC addresses are communicated with the help of a device called as a switch so here earlier days the communication from one PC to the other PC was happening only through a crossover cable where you have to communicate both of them. Now as the world has grown as the equipments on a LAN network is growing up you need a centrally located device which can easily communicate between multiple devices. So then they came up with a device called as hub. So you know uh, hubs are no more used you can only see those hubs in the museum nowadays but hubs were the earlier devices which were used for intercommunication between multiple devices. Say I have five PCs on my LAN network. If I have to communicate all the five PCs on my LAN network, I will have a centrally located device as you can see the switch which connects the two PCs. Earlier the device was called as hub. So what, is the what was the hub doing? Hub was called as a broadcast device. When say I have five PCs on my network, say when one device is sending a message, the hub doesn't have the capability to read a message where it is going on or for example say you have a postman in your particular area who just wants to send uh, a mail to a particular uh, destination so if he doesn't have the capability to read the destination address he will can just forward it to any person he wants so the same way 
see when the data goes from a PC towards the next PC it has different layers you call it to be OSI layers you call it to be so OSI layers has different uh, addressing schemes so at your layer 2 or where you have a switch you have an addressing scheme called as MAC address as we saw earlier a PC has a MAC address so now when the device is sending up data from one end to another end it will have a source MAC address source MAC address is nothing but my MAC address and the destination would be a destination PC which I am going to send it so now when the data the source and the destination MAC address reaches the hub so those data you call otherwise to be frames so when it reaches the hub he doesn't have the capability to understand where should I forward the exact data. So exactly he would broadcast it to everybody on the same LAN network. So now when he is broadcasting it to everybody on the same LAN network, say for example there might be a person who might be working against the company. So he will be able to get all the messages which are going around the LAN network. So you don't have a proper security on a LAN network with a device called as hub. So next the upgradation on networking they made us from the hub they came up with a device called as switch. So switch when you compare hub and a switch hub you call it to be a dumb device because as we saw earlier he doesn't have the capability to read the address what is the frame coming on. When you see a switch switch is called as an intelligent device where it has the capability to understand where is the data coming from and where is the data going to so this is the exact functionality of a switch where switch will never do a broadcast he will do something called as a unicast and in switch there is a table called as mac address table inside a switch which will have which is the port and which is the mac address connected to so now at the initial stage when you start a switch switch will never have any mac address inside it it will have only the empty table so when a packet comes into the switch the switch has a capability to read the packet which is coming in so he will learn the source MAC address and when the packet is forwarded if there is no entries present inside the switch the switch will do a broadcast initially once the reply comes back towards the switch the switch will send it exactly to the person who has sent it because the entry has been made so each and every time when a message gets into the switch the switch will learn the source MAC address so now forwarding of data has been very easier and now you will have a better security when you would have a device called as a switch so now inside a LAN network every connectivity is happening based on a device called as a switch switch is present on a LAN network you call it to be local area network or it is a LAN network now on a LAN network the addressing scheme or is called as MAC address media access control address which is a layer 2 address now say for example I have to send a data from my LAN network towards the internet or I am using a PC inside my LAN network I want to access Gmail or Yahoo how do I access it I need a next device which you can see at the top that is called as a router so what is the work of a router or how does router work router in simple terms you can say that it's a device which connects two different LAN networks so now you can see one switch to this side and one switch towards the other side so this can be said as one LAN network and the other can be said as the second LAN network so now one LAN can only communicate with the PCs inside it whereas the other LAN can also communicate with only the PCs inside it now if the data has to go from this PC to the other end PC over the other side it needs a device called as a router as you can see at the top so this device is just for connecting two different LAN networks and this router again has a table called as a routing table and this router is present on the third layer of your OSI model so this device is doesn't understand MAC address he understands something called as IP address or those you call it to be logical addresses so this logical addresses is again maintained by a group called as IANA you call it to be internet assigned number authority so they have divided the whole world into different regions and they have allocated the addresses so now when the data is going from one end towards the other end router has a table inside this so that table you call it to be routing table when he receives a packet 
he will see whether I know the particular destination. If I would know the particular destination, I would forward the data or otherwise he would drop the data. So packet transfer between a LAN network and the other will be possible only based on the routing table entries which is present inside the router. So as of you now, I'm, I'm sure that you would know what is a NIC card, what is a switch and what is a router. These are the three major components we can see which is required on a LAN network. So now the next you can see is the characteristics of a network. What is required on a network for a smoother data transfer? So the very first one you can see is the speed. So when you see about a speed, say for example earlier in 1970s or 1980s you would access the internet it would take say 10 to 15 minutes for you to get into the particular uh, device which you exactly require. So now but nowadays when you can see that if you want to access a Gmail or Yahoo, I just make an enter the same minute I would be getting the entry. So now you can just imagine what is the speed required because the world moves very faster. Everybody requires speed in a very much, uh, in a very, very quicker manner so that they will be able to access their data. So inside a network always speed is a very first criteria which is required. The next is the cost. So when you say about a cost as when you are doing on a company's infrastructure, when you are building up a company, the infrastructure cost actually depends on the device. So when you are doing it for a device, you should be exactly sure that what all things are required or what all equipments you can cut short it or what all equipments are much more required for you to exactly go on with that. So that would exactly cut cost your cost onto the company. Next, the third point is security. See nowadays you can see so many hackers, so many uh, attackers are there who would really get into your network and pull the data from your LAN network. So security is the next very important thing that you have to be sure when you are creating a LAN network. So nowadays we have so many security devices such as ASA, firewall. So many vendors are there only into security which they can provide security. So yeah, when you design a LAN network make sure that you have a proper security device so that you can exactly mold your network so that other intruders or attackers from a different LAN network will not come into your network and take your data out because nowadays on a LAN network exactly data is the one which is much more required or data is the one which cost you. Now the fourth point is availability. So what is availability is the nowadays when you when you make say when you make an enter the same time you require that you need that particular page on that so nowadays they provide something called as IPSLA service level agreement which is 99.9 percentage .9 for that you will have all the availability throughout then next is scalability so once you design a LAN network always the thing that should be in your mind is scalability because now you might have a company which has 10 users or 20 users Later in a year it can increase up to 50 users. So then when you are designing a network it shouldn't make, sure, make you think that oh these equipments uh, if I had put in then it would be really good. So that kind of view shouldn't later affect the company. So scalability is very required when you design a LAN network. Then fourth one is reliability as you know the data should be reliable and you should have a reliable connectivity because we do have different protocols which helps upon that. The last one is the topology. So when you define a LAN network, topology really matters. Earlier days we were using a topology called as bus topology, which is nowadays no more. But presently we are using a, a topology called a star topology. As you have seen, a switch was connected to multiple PCs on a LAN network. So that topology was called as a star topology, which otherwise is an evergreen topology, uh, which is used nowadays. So. Uh, I guess you have got a basic idea on what are the devices, what are the characteristics that is required for you to connect or make out a LAN network and what is the addressing format required. So hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.